as I was getting ready this morning, just a few minutes ago before I walked out, uh, the Lord really kind of, uh, as usual, uh, I should be used to this by now, uh, changed the direction of, of you know, it's, it's been all these years and he still does it. And, uh, and at some point I just have to say, okay, and quit worrying about it. Uh, but changed the direction of what I was going to talk about today. And, you know, that's always better when he says it, right? Amen. It's better when he says stuff than when I say stuff. Because when I say stuff, it's just a sermon. But when he says stuff, it's a message. And, <clears throat> you know, I said some things last week that I want to touch on. But, but I really, I, I know what the Lord wants me to talk about. And it, it, I don't know how long it's going to take me. Um, but last week, I said these words. And I've got my notes right here from last week. I brought them out with me just so I'd say it just right. I said, don't just talk to God about what you're going through. Give God what you're going through. Because he went to the cross and gave all so he could take all. Amen. You with me on that? Now, the problem with saying that is that sounds like a good sermon. That just sounds like words that we say. But there's more to it. Because when you give God everything, your circle becomes very small. The people around you don't understand you anymore. Pastor Tony Collins is, is a great voice in my life and, and somebody that, that locally that I look to if I have a question about ministry or anything, he's the one I call. And, and David knows Pastor Tony very, very well. David's known Pastor Tony since he was in his teens. And he will tell you this is the truth. Uh, Pastor Tony was bound up, wonderful man of God, but was bound up with anger and frustration for so many years that he went to a conference in California and something happened to him in that conference, and it was a children's conference. It wasn't even a, an adult conference. He was just there looking at a children's program. And he was in a children's conference, and the Lord did something in his heart so strong that he came back so different. His wife moved out because he was different. Like, he's a different guy. Like, she moved out for a little. She was like, I don't know who this is. Am I, it's the truth, right? No, but he was so different that it took months for people to realize this is real. Okay, this is real. Now, the point of that is sometimes there's that moment, then sometimes there's that growth. But what happened is, and he and I have talked about this, is sometimes you tend to think because of knowledge. You've heard somebody preach something and you say, oh, I've got to get into that. I've got to move to that level. I've got to learn. Or we say this. Now, those are real things you do have to, to learn to grow. Now, Here's the other church thing. This is what I'm talking about today because you've all heard this. You've all said this. I've said this. We've all said it. We've all said, you know, I really just don't know right now. I'm just in a season of transition. Now, I hear that all the time, especially when people are coming to the church or they're leaving the church. I'm just in a season of transition. That's what they say. Well, I want to read something to you, and then we're going to dig into this real deep. Go with me, <clears throat> Go with me to the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1. <clears throat> Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 and I'm going to read let's see let me get back to where I was supposed to be here I'm going to read from the King James uh, from the New King James and I'm also going to read from the Amplified to everything there is a season <clears throat> every a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to, uh, to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain uh, from embracing, a time to gain, a time to lose, a time to keep. A time to throw away covers the whole gamut. A time to tear, a time to sow, a time to keep silent, amen. A time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time of war, and a time of peace. Now, God has taken me through this very text multiple times to show me this one thing. Every time it always comes back to the same thing. It's when the Bible talks about these times, those are moments. Okay? There's a time for this, you do this at this time. There's a time for this, you do this at this time. There's a time for this, you do this at this time. But then in the very first text now, in the very first text, everything there is a season, a time for every purpose. Now, this is what I want to say, and then, then I want to make sure that I get what, uh, what he's talked to me about out the right way. You may be in a season... 
but you're not in a season of transition. There is no such thing as a season of transition. The enemy has used that to confuse a ton of Christians to keep them in limbo. Because, well, you know, Pastor, there, there was a time when, when the children of Israel just had to wander. They just had to wander in the dead. Yeah, they did. And they also didn't have the Holy Spirit. They also didn't have a blood covenant that said they'd never be ignorant. They also didn't have the, the, the cross that opened up the door for them to hear. They didn't have the word. They had fire by night and a cloud by day. That's what they had. And they carried their altar with them. And they had a leader who, who listened to God, but they refused to listen to <laughs> so the transition that we've been lied to by the enemy is not real. Well, you know, Pastor, I don't know about that. See, because if, if there's a baby that comes into this world, there's a nine-month season. No, no, no. There's a pregnancy at a moment. Y'all are quiet. Everything happens in a moment. Everything changes in a moment. Now, it may take X amount of weeks, months, or years for it to manifest fully. But when God speaks to you, this is what I want. In God's mind, it happened. That's what faith is. Faith is putting yourself into the mind and the will of God to do what God has asked you to do. And no matter how long it takes for it to flesh out in this life, that is, that is not what we think of as a season. That is accepting this is who I am. When I was in the old building, the Lord spoke to me about the word sonship. Alan, I want you to learn sonship and I want you to teach it. And he told me some other things about it. At that moment, in God's mind, he saw me as having the assignment of teaching sonship. Does that make sense? Y'all with me? Two people. Y'all with me? Because at the moment that you accept the... <laughs> Mary would not have been pregnant with Jesus had she not accepted at the moment. So you all have had moments to decide this or that. Well, I was just tempted. Well, I was just this. I was struggling. I was, we didn't talk about all. We're talking about the moment that you knew what you were going to do. There is no such thing as the season of transition. And we've used that term to be lazy about our spiritual walk. Well, I just don't know what I'm supposed to do right now. I just don't know what church I'm supposed to be locked into. I don't even know how to pray anymore. I just don't know. I just don't know if I'm supposed to be in a Pentecostal church or a Baptist church. I just don't know. I just don't know if I'm supposed to be a word guy. I don't know if God wants me reading Romans or Ephesians. I just I'm just in a season of transition. No, you're not. You're lazy. You're just lazy. I'm lazy. We're all lazy. I don't know if God wants me to be a worshiper or a word guy. You're supposed to be both. You're just lazy. He called you to a place to where you were supposed to have the mind of Christ. And you never read where Jesus said, I just don't know. You know what he said? I got to get away from all you and go pray. That's what he said. But that's not what we do. See, we do the exact opposite of what Jesus does. We need to be closer to people. Yet Jesus had to get away. Because it was the influences of... Please hear me. Don't, don't, don't run off and, and miss what I'm saying. It was the influences of people he loved that pulled at his human side. And he had to get away and let that human side subside so his spirit side could stay connected and he could go do what he was called to do. I'm telling you right now, what I wanted to talk about today was to continue on with some unity stuff and being one with the Spirit and dying to your flesh and all that. But that's not what the Lord said. When I grabbed that doorknob, that's why I was late coming out later than normal because the Lord said, you have got to get back into teaching and living that you're not in the transition, but you're in the moment. Some of you are in moments that are self-created. Some of you are in moments that are God-created. But the point is, is you're in a moment. You're not in a season of confusion because the Bible says where there's confusion and envying and strife, there's every evil thing. Listen, I just gave you a big steak instead of milk today. You need to chew on this. If Satan can get us believing the lie that we're in a season of transition, then he just gave you a license to stay confused about your spiritual walk. I can go home now. 
Because the truth is, if you can understand that he just gave you the lie and you just bought it hook, line, and sinker, now every evil thing is now ministering to you. And I want to say this to you, and I'm not being mean, but you need to hear what the Holy Spirit said. He said, tell my people that if they can't forgive themselves, then they have put themselves on a higher level than God. Let me tell y'all something. I've had a bad week. I don't want to preach y'all today. Ooh, got tight right then. Y'all want, y'all want my job? I'll hire any one of you for a week and you'll come back crying and say, you can have it back. Last thing I want to do is walk out of that office door. But it means more to me to be in my moment than to be in my mind. Because I know that if I open this up and every year thing begins to minister and I start getting over into well you just don't understand you're not a preacher hey there's a thousand other preachers who've been through what I've been through I am no better no worse forgiveness is still forgiveness and if I can let Jesus forgive me then I can forgive I ain't done nothing wrong don't get your mind going but the truth is we all deal with stuff and we get caught up in this well I just don't know I just don't know but you just don't understand I just can't forgive myself well then then how much more Should you humble yourselves and pray? Because you've now put yourself on a pedestal that even God can't reach you. And Satan has convinced us that that's holy. And it's not. See, today ain't one of them cute little worship days. Today's one of these days where we got to walk out of here knowing. See, because people ask me, why don't you preach Mother's Day? Why don't you preach Father's Day? Why don't you preach Christmas? Why don't you preach Easter? Let me tell you why. Because all of those days should be every day. And, and let me, I'm just going to be very transparent. This is a real story. There was a, there was a young man who had really done some things in his marriage that, that were bad, but he, he wasn't an abuser or anything like that, but he just was not allowed to see his kids for a, a long season. And for him, it was a long season. I don't know what, what the season was. Hadn't been to church in forever. Went to church on a Father's Day. Looking for some encouragement. Now, let me explain something to you. Now, I make jokes about Father's Day all the time. I do. I say if they want to have a Father's Day because they have a Mother's Day. I believe that personally. I believe Hallmark is like, yeah, we better give a Father's Day. But preachers tend to go on Mother's Day how awesome all of you are. And on Father's Day how awful all of you are. And that's the truth. If you ever catch a Father's Day sermon, it's usually about men step up. This guy went into a service on a Father's Day. To, and he needed ministered to. And the preacher preached hellfire and brimstone on bad fathers. And he went home and committed suicide. There is a necessary purpose to preaching by the leading of the Holy Spirit, not by the season. You have to preach by what is real and what is right now and not because of the season you're in. If you've ever had a prophetic edge in your life, me and April both deal with this. We both are very prophetic. If you have a prophetic edge to your life, we're a season ahead. So while the church is all happy and things are going good, we're over here in tears and praying what's next because we feel the next season. But we don't preach the next season. We preach the direction. See, we can't live by what's around us and even what we think is around us. We have to live by the intimacy and voice of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I pray that you all be one together. I I pray that you all be in unity. Uh, He says, I'm the branch and you are the vines. He's not saying that I hope you all just get along. He's not saying that. He's saying that if we all get in one mind and one accord, the entire world can be shook. He proved it with 12 people. So when you live life thinking, listen, please listen to me. This is real heavy on me this morning. And I don't don't mean to come at you, but you got to get this. If you live your life, if I can just get here, if I just attain this, if I just have that, if they will just see this, if they'll just encounter that, then all of you put yourself on an island unto yourself. And you're waiting on the next thing to happen. And while you're waiting on the next thing to happen, you've missed life. I am the king of this. Uh, Because I'm a visionary, I'm always looking to the next thing. And I'm always, oh, if we could just do this. We opened the bakery. Me and and our business partner, we're both visionaries. We We weren't 10 days in and we're already talking about another store. And April's like, hold up there, big fella. Because that's what we do. But the truth is, is by leaping without praying would cause more problems. Although it looks prosperous, but what does it cost? 
Please hear me today. I'm not trying to get you angry, and I'm certainly not trying to, to not be honorable. But what I am trying to get you to understand is when the Bible says that, that everything has a season and a purpose unto man, it's not, talking about, it's not talking about seasons of fear, seasons of confusion, seasons. When, when you move over into the new covenant, you have one season. It's the season of love. It's the season of care. It's the season of grace. It's the season of the anointing. It all flows together. If you really understand and research what salvation really means, April says it all the time, Sotoria, nothing missing, nothing broken. How many of us, including me and my wife and my family, how many of us can raise our hands and say that we live a life of nothing missing and nothing broken? And Satan has tricked us with our own words to stay out of that good place because we're in a season of transitions. Is this making sense to you? Because you live by your own words. You don't live by mine. I live by my own words. I don't live by yours. Now, I want to say this, and, and, then, and then I want to try to bring this into a place where we can really, really release it uh, in a nutshell. When... We, we've, we've had multiple pregnancies. We have t- tons of children. And every single pregnancy and delivery was different. Every single one of them. Now think about this. We say things like, well, such and such is expecting a baby. And then we automatically itemize what they're going to go through by our experience. There is no way anybody can experience the birth of a a unique child unless you're that person. And as close as I was there, I I was on this side of it. But April, if you were to ever talk to her, can tell you everything that she went through physically, everything she went through mentally, everything she craved. There was one time that it it was Dairy Queen ice. I would sit in Dairy Queen and come home with cups of ice. And we'll put the ice in the freezer. And it'd be gone. And the next day I'd get off of work. Dairy Queen ice. Then there was one that it was sardines. Right out the can in my brand new truck. Wasn't happy. Sardines. She don't, have little, I mean, she don't even eat that kind of stuff. She just like, I mean, I loved it. Do y'all remember, some of y'all, some of y'all are not old enough, but some of you are. Do you remember out, out near where the, uh, where the uh, uh, thrift store is, used to be Mary's Restaurant? I remember Mary's Restaurant? I would have to take off of work and go sit in Mary's, they had that little drive through that looked like it was going to fall off the building. I'd have to sit in that drive through from 10 till 11. I would have to sit there. Like she, she, she wouldn't let me wait. No, you're going now. I would sit there. To get, what was it? Turnip greens. For breakfast. Every day. Every single day. My boss knew. My boss was like, hey, time to go get them greens. And they were so good about it. But here's my point. Let me, let me explain something to you. This, this, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to ease it up because I know I came at you pretty hard. That was seasonal. Because she ain't going to pull out no, no sardine right now. She ain't going to do it. That was seasonal. Right? But the birth and the beginning of the pregnancy was a moment. Are y'all with me? There is a moment that God has talked to all of you about that you've either accepted or rejected. And you're living in a season now based on the assumption of what you did. See, God called me to pastor this church. It wasn't what I wanted to do. I'm better at serving. I'm better at putting a tape table together. I'm better at organizing. I'm, better at, I'm, not, I'm not good at this stuff. But this is what he said do. And I accepted it. And now that I accepted it, this is my season. But the confusion over whether I should or shouldn't was not a season. That was prolonged agony I put on myself. And the Lord told me to come out here and tell you that today for whatever, I don't know what y'all are going through. And it may just be for one. But there is no such thing as God using confusion to bless you. It's just not real. There was a, 
What was uh, with Caleb? It was it was the sardines and the the Captain D's right all the time. And then it was the ice. Then it was the Mary's restaurant. There's been so many. What was one? There's one more I'm looking for. Was it Jello? Wasn't there one where it was Jello? Y'all, have y'all ever been around enough pregnancies to, to itemize how many cravings? You don't want to talk about it? You don't remember? Wasn't no Jello? What was a Jello thing? Excuse us while we have a personal conversation. I know there was a season of some Jello. I don't know. But anyway, the point is. There are things that she did in those seasons that in this season wouldn't matter. She just wouldn't do. Because for whatever reason, the hunger changed. Listen to me. I'm fixing, I'm fixing to drop something on you, whether you get it or not, it's up to you. When you move into your next season, being led by your appetites changes. You become hungry for what's in that season if you're yearning for what's in the old season, then maybe you heard the wrong voice. Because, back to this whole forgiveness thing. I'm throwing a lot at y'all. Are y'all okay? I got a lot to get out. And I'm trying to get it out before lunch is over. Um, <clears throat> if you, listen to me, if you can't forgive yourself, and this is a spiritual principle, please, please listen. This is, I'm, I'm not meant for laughs. I'm not trying to get shouts. I'm trying to teach you something. If you cannot forgive yourself... You've put yourself on a higher plane because God is always talking to you about redemption, but yet you're staying away from that redemption because nobody knows what I'm going through. And if you, you are now being, and she taught me this, you are now being ministered to by demons. So if you want to live in, I can't forgive myself, then you're living in Satan's world. And you've given yourself over to that season. And the beauty of redemption is that at any moment you can turn it around. At any moment the cross is still powerful and the blood still works. And you can accept the mind of Christ instead of your chaotic mind. There are people, <clears throat> there are people in this world that will say when this happened in their life or that happened in their life or they, they should have died in a car wreck or, or this plane should have went down with them in it and all these, they will always say, but something inside me said. See, they were listening to the right voice. They just didn't know how to articulate it. The problem is that you can listen to that voice every day. If he can't amaze you and lead you and guide you every day, he's not God. I refuse to believe that God wants me in pain. I refuse to believe that God wants to hurt me. I refuse to believe that God will use my past against me. I refuse to believe that about God because I don't find it in his word and I don't find it in his nature. But I find that in the enemy. But yet as Christians, we live there. Now, this is what I want to say. Many of you in this room, because the Holy Spirit would not have said it if it weren't real. Many of you in this room may not be using the words, I'm in a season of transition. But you certainly live in the chaos of it. And God is calling you to accept whatever it is he's talking to you about. You ain't got to be perfect. Please hear me. You don't have to be perfect. To, listen, I can barely speak half the time. I jumble so many words up, I laugh at myself. But yet he said, I want you on stage preaching to people publicly. Never question that. That's what you said. That's what I do. I don't, but I was, I was also very vocal about, you know, I don't like this, but I'll do it. I don't like it, but I'll do it. I'd rather be behind the scenes, but I'll do it. If I've ever seen evidence of that, it's with my wife. She would rather be in that green room putting something together for somebody and just doing something privately. She, she don't want nobody to know her name. She can't stand any of that stuff. But yet, when she walks into that jail, she owns it. Because the anointing on her goes first, not her. Because she accepted that season. Are y'all with me? There are things that God wants to do through you. There are things that God wants to do to you. And there's things that he wants to do with you. And all of those take cooperation. Now to cooperate with the Holy Spirit is not an easy task. Because it's going to require you not to be you. My favorite, favorite, favorite thing that the Lord has ever said to me 
was way back years ago. Years and years and years ago. We were going to, to a, a private, little private ministry conference in Birmingham. It was a small room, about half the size of this, probably 20 ministers in there. I won't say who the minister was because it doesn't matter. But before we got there, the Lord spoke to us to give uh, an offering. And I won't tell you the number, but let's just say it was sizable. And it was, it was more than our house payment. It was, it was a big number. And I was sitting in the car and I said, Lord, that's all I have. And he said, good, that's all I want. I don't care what you have, but he wants it. He wants all of you. Every bit of you. Every piece of who you are. The, the mindset of, Lord, I love you, but has got to go. This is a very challenging day for all of you, including myself, because now is the time to understand that to move into the grace we really want means that you got to fully immerse yourself in him. And to do that means, listen to me, what I learned is that my, my attitude and my humor and my way of doing things don't work with him all the time. And you have to submit yourself to him. And I'll tell you this story, and then I'll be done. I learned this valuable lesson in that room right there. Had some guest ministers here. <clears throat> Just finished two or three strong meetings. As a matter of fact, it was the meeting. I don't know if y'all know about this. It was the meeting where Pastor Tracy sat here and prophesied for 20 minutes. And, and, it was, and as a matter of fact, if you read the prophecy and what you see with our, today's political climate, you would be shocked that eight years ago it was spoken right here. And that prophecy was transposed and sent around the world by Brother Copeland. That's the truth. We got to Texas. It was laying everywhere. Little bitty podunk church in Alabama. But yet God used us to get something around the world. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Because we were smart enough to record. Now, same. April had such an encounter with the Holy Ghost that time. I don't, I'm not going to tell her story. But, but she laid in the bed. How long were you in the bed? Till the next night. Like, you know, like, like out in the Holy Ghost. Trying to get up, can't. Just lay there, let the Lord minister to her. But under that powerful anointing, we walked in that room right there. And we're back there making coffee. And when you, hey, I, I believe Jesus and the disciples were around the fire. It was, it was men. I believe they made dumb jokes. I believe that. So we're all in there. And Pastor Tracy, we're all laughing, joking, blah, blah, blah. Pastor Tracy made a couple jokes, and I made a couple jokes, you know, because I can't let nothing go. And, and we just, it just begins to grow, and we're laughing. And all of a sudden, stirring his coffee, he's laughing and laughing and laughing, and he looks down at his coffee, and a tear comes out the side of his eyes. And he goes, yes, sir, we'll stop that now. The Holy Spirit said, that's enough. Are you that sensitive? Because I realized at that point I was not. Because I had four more jokes lined up. I was ready to go. But see, we were living in our season at that. We, we, were, we, were, we were doing the, the holiness, the heaviness, and the real glory had just released a word to prepare the church for the next 12 years. And we're joking in there over coffee. Well, pastor, we just can't be that spiritual. We just can't be that, that serious. Oh, in this world, you saw what COVID did. You better be. You better be. This is not the day that Pastor Allen just, just makes us laugh and sends us home and pats us on our boom boom and it's all going to be okay. No, no, no. You got to grow up. You, you can't live by our preaching. You have to live by his teaching. And you have to be close enough to him. Well, you know, we just come to church and we get what we get. What are you going to do when the day comes that somebody tells you you can't come to church? Because they proved in California they could do that to you. Oh, well, Pastor, you're getting political. No, I'm not. Read your Bible. It's all there. My job as a pastor is, it, listen, I'm going to say this, and I really want you to get it. My job is to see the lion and the tiger and the bear that's trying to take the sheep. You know what the sheep see? Teeth. That means you're too close. That's all sheep see. They're too busy eating whatever their appetites call them to eat. But the shepherds have to protect 
And this is what I'm doing today. The Lord said, stop believing that you're in a season of transition or the confusion that's in your mind and accept the mind of Christ. Accept where you're supposed to be rooted and planted and grounded and growing. And accept the fact that God has not called you to have a spirit of fear. And God has not called you to be the great condemner of others. God is also, he don't need your help. He got a Holy Ghost. He don't need you telling people how to live. He needs you to live what comes out of your mouth. And I'm, I want you to know this. You may tell me by your mouth what you believe, but you will show me by your life what you believe. The problem is God already knows, and he's trying to fix some stuff today. Now, happy Father's Day. Whether you know it or not, I gave you, I gave you, I gave you some things today that will change your family. Because like I said, I've, I've had one of those weeks where, where you just want to put a match to everything and say, heck with it. You're not going to do that. But you know, you, listen, y'all say, y'all, y'all be holy all you want to. I could be the most transparent person in the room. I have those days. But even in the midst of that, God wraps his arms around me. And he says, I got you. See, we have to stop thinking that we have to be perfect. But we do have to put in effort. Now, I'm going to say this and we're done. God will never use your past against you. He will never use condemnation to hurt you. And he will never use you to condemn somebody else. However, he needs you to forgive. And I keep hearing this in my spirit. He needs you to forgive yourself. Because you're being ministered to by demonic spirits. Now, they can't make you sick or drive you off the bridge and kill you, but they can talk to you. And I can speak as a drug addict and somebody who's been in jail and been in trouble and all the things. Every time I've done something stupid, it started with somebody talking to me. Now, I got two minutes, which means nothing. Because now I've laid the foundation, I'm going to get to my message. Everybody just went, what? <laughs> I want to give you one more scripture. <clears throat> John, ch- John chapter 17, verse 23. I'm reading it from the King James. He'll have it up. He's got it up in the Amplified. Change it to the uh, King James for me. Can, you know how to do that, Tucker? Go King James. John chapter 17, verse 22. We're going to close with this scripture right here. Hey, you're good, man. Don't get nervous. Tucker's running it by himself back there this morning. There you go. Verse 22. There you go. Good job, Tucker. Hey, let me just say this. If you've never run all these lights and that at the same time, you don't know how difficult that is. And he's back there by himself. All right, John 17, 22. And the glory which thou hast givest me, and I have given them, it's Jesus speaking, that they, speaking of you, may be one even as we are one. Stop. He's saying even as me, Jesus, and God, as close as we are, at the anointing I flow in, the healings that can happen, all those are secondary to us being together and being close. Second verse, I in them, thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them, and thou hast loved me. Our unity, our purpose, our goal. If you ever get into this place where you don't know what your purpose is, You can go back to this and know that your purpose is to walk in one with God. That may not mean anything to you, but that means everything to me. Because I was so far away from him when God was graceful enough to put me in a service that changed my life. 
I was so far away from him many times, even in ministry. So off the mark, saying things I shouldn't say. We live this every day. But Jesus said, my goal, my will is that they may be perfect in one. God has not called us just to be a big church and us all do things together and wear all the same clothes and, 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 and t-shirts and, and, and put up the, the, the posts. And that's not what the point. The point is to be one, that, that the love of Jesus from every Christian shines no matter where that Christian is because there is no such thing as a bad Christian or a good Christian. Just a Christian. Just a Christian. Because if you're really focused on God, you'll try to talk, people, uh, talk to people about His. God didn't pray, or Jesus didn't pray for us all just to get along. He wants us to be focused. He wants us to be together. And I told you last week, there's no such thing as a second-born son. Just the firstborn. Which means you have all the rights. And... Let me ask you this. Oh, Jesus, I'm going, i got a whole other message. Do you think... Do you think that God is angry with Jesus? No, of course not. Why would he be angry with Jesus? Jesus did everything he asked him to do. So, the blood of the one who did everything he asked him to do is now on you. Let that sink in for a minute. The blood of the one that he asked to do everything and he did it is now on you. Which means the blood that carried the judgment to the cross and killed it still can't carry judgment. The only judgment and pain you're going through is what you've put yourself through, what you allow others' words to put you through, or what you allow the enemy to put you through. Because Jesus gave you everything. And all he's saying, all he's saying, look at it, in I in them, and thou in me, which means we're together and we're one in God, that they, being you, may be made perfect. Made perfect. We're all a bunch of screw-ups, but yet we're made perfect. We make mistakes every day. We say wrong things, but yet he wants us made perfect. I don't know about you, but it's very convicting to me. To know that he wants us made perfect. And we fight with him at every step. And everything we want, he's already given us if we just move in the right direction. But we don't realize that. So I'm going to pray for you this morning. Just sit where you are. You don't have to, we're not going to stand. We're not going to, I don't, I don't, we're not going to try to set a tone. Aaron, I do want you to come play real softly. Just, that's it. We're going to close this service because this is not, this is almost like, you know, I want to say this. Normally we have church and we all just laugh and have a good time. That's kindergarten church. Then there's college. Do you understand that Ecclesiastes, that the great Ecclesia is actually called the spiritual college? You and the Greek, that's what we're supposed to be in. So today is one of those days where you got some trigonometry when you were ready for like two plus two. Not a fun day for me, but it's a necessary day for him. Father, I pray for these people. I pray for myself. I pray for this church. Oh, God, help us turn our hearts back to you. On this Father's Day, we do celebrate the men that have not only been physical fathers, but, but fathers to those that just needed some influence. It doesn't matter if you ever had children or not. But God, I pray that we put you first. Lord, if we could just pray and seek and be hungry. Go after you with everything in us, Lord. There's nothing like, there's nothing like knowing that you're pleased with us. Oh, and if I could just get these people to understand the grace of the word, the real grace, where you're not angry at us, and even in the midst of our failure, you're trying to move us forward if we'll just listen. 
if we'll just listen. So Lord, I pray over every person in this room today. Your word says that if our eyes are stayed upon you, perfect peace will be in our hearts. Forgive me as a pastor, as a father, as a dad, as a husband for where I've gotten away from that. Forgive me, Lord, for the times that, that, we, we, we just, that, that I personally just move away from you because it's something I want to do. Lord, forgive us for trying to mold the word to our life instead of letting this word mold who we are. Let today be not just a correction, Lord, but, but it, uh, it's not a correction, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment. So with every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. Tucker, if you could dim those lights down, that would be, just go ahead and do that. If you can, I understand, it's fine. With every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. If you're in this place, you say, Pastor Allen, I don't know Jesus. I'm not saying that you haven't been saved and, and, and all that. I'm, I'm not saying that you haven't made the Lord your life uh, the, the, Jesus the Lord of your life and we, look, we, all, we all get off the mark and come back that's not what I'm saying I'm talking about if you don't know Jesus as your Savior this is your moment simply going to pray nobody's going to pull you out call you out or embarrass you but if that's you I'm going to count to three I just want you to put your hands up and right back down because we're all going to pray together. If you need Jesus, now is your moment. One, two, three. All across the place. Amen. Put them right back down. There's hands going up. Wait just a second. Amen. I see them. All right. Everybody in this room, you're going to pray together. Everybody say this after me. Say, Father. Those of you who raised your hand, say this with me too. Say, Father, thank you that you sent Jesus to die for me. I accept the free gift of salvation. I accept freedom. I accept the blood of Jesus. Today I will be free from all the pain and I look to my future with you because I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. People got saved today. And... Uh, Those of you who just got saved and those of you like me that's been saved a long time, don't just talk to God about what you're going through. Give God what you're going through. Give God what you're going through. He paid a price, a terrible price, a terrible price for us to be able to give him everything. And I want you to do that. You can do that privately. Uh, it's up to you how you do it. Because sometimes, and let me say this, and it, please, you need to hear this. You hear a lot of preachers say, we need revival. We just need revival. We need revival. Revival is not pretty lights and a guest speaker. Revival is the dead coming back to life. Revival is demons screaming out. If you, you've never been in a real revival if you ain't seen demons cast out of people. I'll tell this this one story that way because I I know what I'm talking about. I didn't ask your permission to tell this story, so I apologize if it upsets you. But when I first got saved, this was before I cut my hair. I think I can't remember, but we we found this little church in Jasper. It's a little independent non denominational church, and some people came one night. That actually she had known a lot longer than me. And I'm a brand new Christian. I'm not, we're talking about brand new. Like I still smell like smoke. I'm brand new. And we're in this little building. It's, it's just my family, the pastor's family, and these folks, and maybe a couple, uh, a couple older people. Bill and Midge were there. And uh, right, in the middle, right in the middle of service, my wife looks at me and she goes, you need to take the kids to the back room. Well, I have no idea what she's talking about. But I, Hannah was Hannah was a baby. Like Hannah was like she was that big. I just put her in my pocket like a like a chihuahua, and took Hannah and I, I took Hannah and I took Paige and I took the boys and we went. We just had four kids at that time. That's how long ago it was. We took the kids to the back. Well, I hear this commotion up front. 
I'm like, what in the world? I ain't even baptized in the Holy Ghost yet. I'm just now t- putting my water, my toe in the water on this thing. I'm like, what in the world? Is-? They talking about us being crazy. And I stuck my head out the door. And this lady, well, I would never say her name, and y'all don't know who it is anyway. They're not even from this area. But this lady who had been in a thousand churches and preached and ministered and done all these different things and had these prayer groups was laying on the floor writhing like a snake with demons coming out of her. My little bitty wife <laughs> grabbed her by her throat and said, stop praying in them fake tongues and poured oil down her <laughs> she, won't, she, won't, she won't talk about it. She poured anointing oil on her tongue and it stopped like that. And she spit that devil out and it was, nah, it was like, if you've never seen that, I'm sorry, but it's real. That was my first encounter into this world. And that, from that point on, I, I, don't, I don't know that, that person. I don't know where they're at. I, I don't know. But I know that one, the few times we did talk to them, the conversations were different. But see, it's somebody, not just her, but it was some other people, but just somebody focused on what the Lord needs to do to get somebody free versus just having church. And I'm standing here. I promise you I'd get you out. I lied. I'm standing here, and I'm watching this happen, and I've never seen anything like that before. And honestly, at that time, April was so super quiet, you barely heard her talk. Barely, literally ever. So for me to see something so powerful happen, because I know her and I know her life, I saw something real. And I said, you know what? Whatever this is, I've never been exposed to this God, but whatever this is, I'm yours. And it's not been the easiest journey. But it sure hadn't been boring, I can tell you that. God will take you around the world, any of you. Those of you may be saved a thousand years and those of you may be saved a thousand seconds. God will do whatever you allow him to do. Catherine Kuhlman had one of the most powerful healing ministries on the planet. And a young lady, or I'm sorry, a young man was in one of her meetings. He was, from a, he was from a third world country, 20 years old, didn't know anything about Jesus, got healed in her meeting, started reading the Bible, went back home, within three weeks was speaking to 20,000 people, just tell them what happened. Turned him into one of the greatest ministers in that continent because he fully gave himself to Jesus. He's asking you for everything. But Lord, that's all I got. Good, that's all he wants. Amen? He just wants you. He wants the ugly. He wants the good. He wants the, he wants the thought life that you wish you could get. He wants it all. And life is so much lighter when you can just give it to him. You know, you, know, you can't. It's hard to chain up a free man. Paul, oh Lord, I, I told you I got 13 messages in my brain. The Apostle Paul was in the bottom of a jail. He was in the sewer, chained like this. They would let his arms down once a month. That's when he would pin the letters to the Ephesians, to Galatians. He would up like this. And in the midst of that, with rats chewing on his skin, his feet where he was up to his, his calf muscles and sewage, yet Paul says, I'm free. Think about that. Wouldn't that be great to wake up tomorrow and feel free? You know, that could happen in a moment. It's between you and him. It's between you and him. Amen. Did you receive anything today? Did you learn anything? Amen. Let's let me pray real quick and then we're gonna we're gonna release you and go, man, go enjoy your family today. Go have a Father's Day or whatever it is you plan on doing. Just just remember that that God gave you an opportunity for freedom and all he wants you to do is take it. That's all he wants you to do. Um, do I need to announce anything? I don't need to announce anything. We don't have anything planned that I know of. No. So as you leave today, just remember we'll have the offering at the, the back doors. You guys go ahead and transition. I just want you to know that if God gave all, all he wants is everything. But that does not include your money. He just wants you to listen to him. Because, and, and let me just say this because we are transitioning into the offering. Please, please hear this. Most of you know me, but I I feel like I can really say this today. I don't preach offerings because I don't feel like I need to. Uh, I feel like most of you are mature enough to know what the Lord's talking to you about. 
Um, tithing is important. It's how you open up the gates of heaven in your life. Uh, giving is important. It's how you sow seed into the future of your life. Whatever you, want, whatever you want to see in your future, you sow toward it. That's just how it works. But if you ever, ever, ever hear somebody trying to pull money out of your pocket, that ain't God. You just got to hear Jesus, and that's all I ask you to do this morning. So, Father, I pray as we get ready to go, I pray over every person. I thank you that we get to be tithers today. We get to release our tithes, and we get to see the, the, the windows of heaven open up over our lives. And, Lord, as we sow seed, as we give in offerings, we get to see the, the things open up that we're believing you for. There's businesses in this room that are prospering now that, that the government tried to shut down. There are things happening in our lives that, that people around us said, without this or without that, it'll never happen. But with you, all things are possible. And we thank you that as we give in the offerings and we release our tithes today, we get to see the goodness of who you are show up. So, Lord, thank you for these people. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you that you are good, and I thank you that they're walking out of this place with freedom. In Jesus' name, amen.